What's going on guys, this is Foresight Capital and today we're going to take a look at Palantir's price action for the day, talk about a contract that they signed that I left out of yesterday's video just for timing purposes, and talk about ARK Invest buying operations for the week and whether or not they're still consistently adding Palantir to the ARK W ETF. All that I ask is that if this video brings you value, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing because it really helps this channel reach more people and we're very close to 10,000 subscribers. So today, Palantir closed down about a percent and a half to $28.04 per share, and then faded just a bit more in aftermarket hours to $27.50. What's very interesting is that we saw some big pre-market price movements again, and a lot of you mentioned in yesterday's video that you weren't able to see the candlesticks that I was referring to on your own brokerage. If your brokerage doesn't allow you to see pre-market or post-market hours, you're missing a lot of the picture of overall trading. While most of the volume actually happens during the trading day, there can be pretty big price movements. In fact, I had been mentioning for some time that we needed to see a pullback on Palantir to the 2460 level, and we saw just that yesterday morning pre-market hours at about 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time before the market opened, and ultimately that led to allowing us to be able to rally and break above the 2770 resistance on some positive news. If you aren't able to see the pre-market hours though, you would have missed that. I've actually left a link to Weeble in the description below, which if you sign up and deposit at least $100, they'll give you four free stocks between now and December 31st, and they allow you to see and trade pre-market and post-market hours. So this morning we actually saw an increase in price of Palantir from about $28.60 per share to about $29.60. And this all happened between about 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time before the market opened. And then when the market opened, we had a pretty big sell-off down to about $28 per share and a continuation of that sell-off all the way down to a low today of $26.82. So a very volatile day. This 2682 is actually when we came in line with the 200 period moving average and quickly reverted right back up to this $27.70 per share level that we've been talking about for quite some time. It acted as resistance for the past couple of weeks multiple times and when we finally broke above that yesterday, I mentioned that we needed to see the price pull back and use 2770 as support now in order to be able to have a strong setup for the next leg higher in Palantir, which will ultimately be pushing towards this $30.85 per share range, which was recent spikes, um, the high of the recent spike, and towards the bottom side of this longer term support line that we just recently broke through over the past week and a half or so. We did today see that pullback right to the 2770 line, and while we broke through it, and ultimately close this candle just below. Within the next hour, we spiked back above 2770, and for the rest of the day, closed every hourly candle above this 2770 period, with the exclusion of the very last hourly candle at about 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My apologies, we broke just below it, and that's not really a concern to me because it was a very low volume candle. What we need to see over the next couple of trading days, though, so Thursday and next Monday is a continuation of this consolidation around 2770, or at least not a major break below. If we have a couple of hourly candles open and close below this 2770 level, that could mean that we're going to fade back to about $26 per share where we were seeing recent support. However, if we can continue to close above 2770, open and close full hourly candles and maybe even see a bit of an uptrend. I think that starts the next leg up of this rally that we've seen from $24.60 per share. And we'll head up towards $30.85 per share where we saw recent resistance or towards the bottom side of this trend line. Now the reason for all of this price movement over the past couple of days, first and foremost is that the US Army re-up their contract for a second year option with Palantir to continue using their services at a valuation of about $113.8 million, which was about a quarter of their $458 million four-year contract that they signed in December 2019, which they had to fulfill one year and then had the option of picking up the next three years. So they did pick up the second year and that increased 
Palantir's estimated revenue from about $1.4 billion to about $1.5 billion next year, at least according to analysts. And that is it represents about an 8% increase. What I didn't mention in yesterday's video is that they also struck a deal with the United Kingdom's government to use their data analytics for COVID-19 vaccine distribution. And that value of the contract is about 24.5 million British pounds, which once converted to United States dollars, represents about a 45 to 5% increase in their estimated revenue for next year. Again, using that 1.4 billion analyst estimate as a baseline, not factoring in this 113 million. So those two contracts alone represent somewhere around 8 to 12% of next year's estimated revenue. And we saw an increase in valuation of about 10% yesterday and a little bit of a pullback today. That means that just if we're looking at top line revenue growth of about 12%, that means we could have a little bit more room to run. Now that's obviously very oversimplified because not all of it will be profit. And a lot of people will say that Palantir is overvalued as it is. So maybe this doesn't end up getting priced in and a dollar for dollar increase or percent for percent increase in valuation. But seeing that we had a nice healthy pullback to a support level and continued to hold that throughout the day, it seems like we've got a very good setup to continue the next leg up towards about $30.85 $30 and then pushing back towards all-time highs. But again, we need to see the price continue to trade above 70, $27.70 per share in order to have high confidence in that. And then I also wanted to talk about Palantir's buying operations or ARK Invest buying operations in Palantir. So we saw that ARK Invest has been adding somewhere around 200,000 to 500,000 to maybe 600,000 over the past couple of trading days and nothing's really changed here. In fact, they bought a very small portion when we saw an increase in price of about 10% and added a little bit more today when we saw a decrease of about 1.6%. So pretty standard buying operations. What we will notice here though is that they're still holding their weight much below the 75 basis points that they previously had bumped it up to, meaning that they may not be willing to buy Palantir at the same levels that they previously were within ARCW. That could mean that they're either expecting a pullback, in which case they'll add a substantial amount of more shares, or they're just not willing to put that much risk on a stock that has the potential to pull back. So there are really kind of two ways to look at that. Or they could just be phasing Palantir out of ARCW altogether, though I don't think that's the case because they're still consistently buying, but we can see they're not buying in large chunks at this point to bring the weight back up to an overall 0.75% or so. So it's interesting to see that ARK Invest is kind of backing off on their buying operations of Palantir for now. Now, of course, the price spiked by about 10%, so you wouldn't expect them to be buying and that much into strength unless they thought that Palantir was going to consistently continue to go up over the next couple of days. But I think we've seen a healthy pullback, some consolidation around 2770 that I would have expected to see and actually mentioned in the video yesterday would be a good thing to uh, confirm this as support. I want to see this stock continue to trade above 2770 on every hourly candle for the next couple of trading days and if we see that I think we'll be very primed to move to the next leg higher. Of course a positive news or negative news catalyst can change all of this and technical analysis only works realistically between news events as we saw we couldn't really control this news event yesterday that spiked the price 10% but we did see uh, still trading around some of the long-term levels that we've been mentioning. So it does work but we need news events to drive the price and then technicals can take over in between news events. So just kind of wanted to give my thoughts on the day, talk about the contract that I didn't talk about, talk about ARK Invest buying operations slowing a bit and I'm curious to see whether or not they're going to continue to add as the price falls or consolidates or whether they're backing off on Palantir. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment below on where Palantir will end up closing on Thursday afternoon over the next couple of trading days. Thanks for stopping by. Catch you in the next one. And again, don't forget to subscribe.